Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Edgy Renka, and I, have, I forgot to say that uh, Spotlight is streaming live all over the world it's on JTV, JTVlive.net. Yes, JTVlive.net. So call your friends all over the world and let them know your family. Let them know that they could tune into Spotlight right now and hear the program live all over the world. JTVlive.net. And if you have a CCT Freedom Plan, uh, the call is already paid for uh, in most instances especially all over America, CCT's Freedom Plan is, uh, you already, already paid for that. So it wouldn't cost you anything extra to call up your family and your friends and let them know that you can now listen to JTV Channel 55 and Spotlight live, streaming live right now. JTVlive.net. I want to welcome my guest, Professor Dana Lewis Andrew, Ambrose, yes, and Dr. Jasmati Ramraj from HLSCC College. They are the chairperson and deputy chairperson of the steering committee for the Islands of the World Conference coming up in 2012. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you becoming a, you're a regular on Spotlight. You always say that every time that I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> you, see, you hear what you said? Every time you are on. <laughs> so I'm telling the truth, right? <laughs> What is the Island of the World Conference? Well, the Islands of the World Conference is basically a conference that's held every two years. And um, it's organized and hosted primarily by an association called the International Small Island Studies Association. And um, they um, came together, um, I think, around the 1980s. Um, these were a bunch of uh, academics, um, professionals, who had an interest in island studies. Um, so they pretty much traveled the world looking at the uh, different islands that exist, and they do various studies um, on those islands in various areas. So they don't only look at the geographic elements, but also the historical and so on. Um, so. They are the persons who um, the conference uh, is usually headed by. And every year, they allow um, small islands from all across the world to bid to host the next conference. So for example, we would have won the bid in 2010. Um, in 2012, when we host the conference, another island or group of islands would win the bid and so on. So the next, 20, uh, the next Islands Conference, which would be 2014 after 2012, uh, would be hosted by another, um, another island. island. Okay. And <laughs> what exactly are they studying? Just studying island life, island people, uh, how islands are made up, what is the history, what is the culture, uh, and they, only, they don't just study it in the context of just looking at the island, but okay, um, how this island has developed over a period. Um, they also look at it in the context of uh, this island or these group of islands in comparison to other islands in another um, area of the world. So that's why um, they have a global, what you would call a global um, identity in a sense, so that's why they call themselves international. <laughs> okay. And who all come to this conference? Well, um, ISISA is the acronym for the International Small Island Studies Association. Uh, they have a membership because they've been meeting every two years, as I said, since the 1980s. And um, they have a membership of close to over 300 people. Uh, not that every single time they have a conference, those same 300 people attend. Um, because what they're looking at doing is spreading uh, their wings and the networking um, that they have already in place. So um, these are people from all over the world. Sometimes the individuals don't even live on islands, but they just enjoy the island, island experience. and. Um, that's, that's what they live and, uh, live and breathe, basically, islands and island life. 
in it, addition, sorry, to the academics, they also have um, practitioners in special areas as well. And the conference is open to students. So students who may be interested in anything related to island life, they tend to attend the conference either to gather information or even to present papers on research that they have conducted either on their own island or another island that they've studied at some point. And what would a research paper consist of? What, what topics would you um, choose to do a research paper? Well, it would be guided by the ISISA organization or rather the host organization for the conference. So for example, um, we've given a set of divisional topics. Those divisional topics were selected because uh, we wanted to ensure that the key areas which affect the Virgin Islands uh, were covered. So the divisional topics that we would have selected are not necessarily divisional topics that would have been uh, in last, um, the last conference in 2010 or in future conferences. So basically, um, for example, uh, we have highlighted education as one of the divisional topics. Uh, it's been grouped with history, literature, and culture. Um, but the reason why that's been highlighted because um, we found that education is a very important element within the Virgin Islands, and not only the Virgin Islands, but also the Caribbean. So uh, people who will be attending this conference would not only be coming necessarily because it's in the Virgin Islands, but also because it's in the Caribbean. And so uh, we also had to look at other areas uh, to see where we could have maybe roped in um, our sister islands, uh, islands that are close by, for example, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, uh, St. Martin, and, and, and right up the island chain. But these are not islands just in the Caribbean. They are islands all over the world. Yes. Like what are some of the, for the lack of a better term, international islands? Well, you know, the uh, Baltics, islands that are further afield. The Baltics, you would have some islands. Um, off England and the UK, you have your Channel Islands. Um, Ireland is fairly relative because um, places like Victoria and BC Canada, which is pretty huge, most of us may not consider an island, but technically it is because it's surrounded by water, is a few thousand square miles. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's relative when it comes to the definition of, of island. Um, you even have people studying off of the coast of New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. So it varies with regards to um, <coughs> islands, islands even in the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Right, so it's pretty global. So you expect a, a fairly decent crowd International, uh, international crowd to come to the Virgin Islands oh, during that conference? Well, well, I can tell you that we've already been receiving um, a lot of emails from uh, persons who've been interested in the conference, because this conference is not only being uh, promoted locally, it's being promoted internationally, of course. Um, and so there's a high in interest level, and uh, we, we are just trying our best to make sure that um, when 2012 comes, we will put on a very good conference to give a good sh uh, show, not just for the Virgin Islands, as I said, but for the mm -hmm. Caribbean. <laughs> okay. Now, you, you, when, the, when the people come to the to the Caribbean, and they're going to have what conferences, workshops, uh, what what kinds of presentations can be expected at the conference? At present, we're mainly looking at um, <coughs> paper presentations group sessions based on themes. So say for example, you're interested in um, tourism. We're expecting to group the tourism papers that are similar together so you can take either a day or a half day, attend a conference for the one day and be able to take away a whole different set of perspectives from the various islands that might be presenting. So that's one option. We intend to have poster presentations as well where we invite um, students, um, academics, practitioners, anyone who might feel Instead of doing an actual oral presentation, they feel more comfortable presenting a poster with the data and information that they've collected or they want to share. So that's another avenue that we're looking at. We're expecting keynote speakers each day, and we're trying to highlight the main topics that we've already um, categorized. Um, and what else are we planning to do? And we well, plan we to highlight the culture and so forth. Right. Um, Some so social events. Yeah. So we're um, going to start and end with social events as well. So how can a local person 
uh, participate in the conference? Okay. First of all, it's open to the general public. Is there a fee you have to pay to come to the conference, or you could just come to the conference and uh, select out a workshop or a presentation that you want to participate in or listen to? Uh, well, of course, there's a fee. Uh <laughs> Everything has Zala. a cost. Zala, 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 I raise, I raise a, a no no. <laughs> well, not really. Um, uh, yes, there's a fee. There's a registration fee, but we've. I think we've been very generous because um, we've uh, been working with a budget, and what we've actually done is um, categorize and, and classified um, how much it would be to actually um, host a conference per delegate. And in, in, in a lot of ways, we've actually uh, reduced the fees slightly below that, uh, so as to m allow the conference still to be attractive, which is why um, we're um, hoping that we can attract sponsorship in the giving areas that we have highlighted as the conference, um, the different divisional topics that we've highlighted. Um, so the registration fee um, well, it, it, it's, it depends now on categories because we have categories of people attending. So the international delegates, they're paying uh, $400 if they register before the early bird um, date. And they're paying uh, $450 if they register after the date. So we're trying to... Uh, well, right now the date is the 31st of December, which is um, just around the corner. Um, <clears throat> Also, we have students. We're also trying to attract students. Now, their registration fee is much lower than that. Uh, so if you are a student, whether you're a graduate student, high school student, college student, uh, the rate is $250. And let me also indicate that that's just not to attend. That includes meals. Mm -hmm. That includes um, attendance at the social events. That attend that includes sorry um, materials materials being used. <laughs> that includes um, the tours that have been well not the pre and post conference tours, but there are two tours that have been um, placed into the program for the conference. It's going to be a short tour on Tartal, and there's a, sh uh, a another tour. Um, on a sea tour. tour somewhat. What are the value of the tours? I would say. It, if you if you had to put a monetary figure to it, I would say the tours would be probably a hundred dollars if you put all them together. I mean, in terms of what do you learn in terms of the educational value? Well, is it something that we are showing off the BVI to the the, the international visitors, or when, what, once they are, when when they are in the tour, they are learning something about the Virgin Islands, and anyone of Virgin Island included can also learn something from the tour. Certainly. Um, the tours, we were hoping to have um, tour guides, if you will, who would be able to highlight historical and cultural significance of places that we go on island. The sea tour, we're hoping to showcase the islands, but then we're hoping to have um, sustainability as part of the tour to indicate um, what efforts the islands might be making towards sustainability. Okay. How can a local person, uh, uh, academic, or uh, anyone participate? You know, make, whether it's make a presentation, hold a workshop. Are you looking for locals to participate, or all the presenters going to be international? Um, I think if we were looking for all the presenters to be international, we would be wasting our time. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, we are looking for local presenters because um, it is the it is the right climate, I would say, to have that type of discourse about issues which are pressing with respect to the national development of, of, of the territory. Um, so people can look at, go online, look at the, um, the divisional topics, and sit back and think, is this an area that um, I'm passionate about? Is this an area that I have training in? Is this an area where um, I can expound and, and share um, or give advice or give um, pointers as to, you know, what needs to be done and so on and so forth? Go on uh, that, way. Yeah. Uh, well, the college uh, website, 
uh, they can go online there or they can go to the conference website which uh, is hlscc.edu.vg slash islands 12 slash that's a lot of things to remember. Yeah. Twelve <laughs> <laughs> Roman numerals as right. well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to repeat that again a little. Yeah, later. that's not a problem. A little later on. <laughs> okay. So, uh, have you uh, spoken with uh, or in, uh, received any interest from local academia or just persons in the in the community? And, and first of all, let me ask, well, let me ask first. Do you have to have any special qualifications to present? No. No. You 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 could just have a high school certificate and you can come and present. We, th that's that that's not our concern. Our concern is that you can uh, present a paper and to put it together based on the guidelines that we would have set out. And again, all of that is on the website. Um, so um, you need to be able to. Uh, first, submit an abstract. An abstract is basically a summarized version of what you're going to be presenting on. Um, we've given pointers as to what that abstract needs to have in, in terms of um, what was the purpose of the paper, what were the research methods that you might have used, um, what was the conclusion, and, and different elements. And as I said, all of that is on the website. And um, as long as you've conformed to that, you submit it to the email address. Now you're going to tell me this one long too. But okay. it's Islands 12 Call. So it's I S L A N D S X I I C A L L at hlscc.edu.vg. Yeah, nobody heard that. <laughs> I know, yeah. I gave the guys inside the, um, so, so the so email. Hopefully so hopefully it'll come hopefully, up on the yeah. screen. Yeah. <laughs> but there must be a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, there's a phone number. But remember, internationally, um, the delegates, they're going to be primarily using email and going on the website. Uh, but somebody, but somebody locally now, and get the get yeah. the email, mm -hmm. and then they could go on the website yeah. if they don't remember it from, from, from Spotlight. Right. Yes. So you need to give the phone number where they can call. They get the email if they don't remember from, from the show tonight. Well, um, they can call me at 852 um, If I'm not there, just leave a message. I'll return the call. Or they could just call the college. All right, just call the just college. Call the HLSCC. Yeah. Yes. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about the purpose. Uh, well, before I talk about the purpose, I think we should talk about uh, the specific guidelines and categories that okay. uh, persons wanting to participate mm. uh, would have to follow and choose. Right. We're going to be right back with more Spotlight right after these words from our sponsors. Keep it locked. Don't move. Spotlight is brought to you by CCT Global Communication, Data Pro, Orion Law, Clarence Thomas Limited, Virgin Island Motors, and Bolo's Wholesale Cash and Carry. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Edwin. I'm here with Professor Ambrose and Dr. Yan Raj of HLSCC, the Islands of the World Steering Committee for the Virgin Islands. And we're talking about the Islands of, Islands of the World Conference that's coming up in 2012, how you can get involved, how you can participate, the, uh, the goals of this conference, and what we expect to gain from it. We want to go back to talking about registering, participation, the mm -hmm. categories, and exactly so that it's clear in a person's mind how they are able to, to get involved in this conference from mm -hmm. uh, a local perspective. Yeah. Okay, so first there's a registration, mm -hmm. and we talk about uh, the international registration. Uh, we Registr got a local registration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a local, well, I mentioned before the student fee, but there's also a local registration fee, which is three, $320 uh, before the early bird rate, um, mm -hmm. or the early bird date. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is December <coughs> the 31st. Yes. Okay. And persons that want to register to attend mm -hmm. for educational purposes 
have to pay the registration fee, yeah. as well as persons who want to present mm -hmm. papers yeah. have to pay the registration fee. And you get what you get for paying this registration fee. As I said, you, um, you're given meals. Um, that includes lunch breaks. Um, you're also given materials, um, conference bag. That includes conference bag, portfolio within the conference bag, pens, just the the usual. You get a copy. Of, you get a copy of, of the, the program, the, program the, pres the the presentation, and you also get a copy of the papers uh, the because papers. we'll be um, compiling the papers um, electronically um, on digital format. Okay. A person in the, uh, in the Virgin Islands that want to present at the conference, mm -hmm. what categories can they choose from or do they have to choose from? Well, it's a multidisciplinary conference and the categories that we've specified so far include um, education, history, literature, culture, uh, sustainable development, alternative energy, climate change, financial services and economy, Caribbean governance, business and society, information and technology, disaster management, health and social development, tourism, conservation, agriculture. So you have a wide it's uh, range of, wide. Of, of categories. And first they submit what you call an abstract, which is a... It's a summary. It's about 250 words, um, 250 sum word summary, sorry, of the entire paper which would include things like um, the purpose of your research, what it was that you did to collect your data, um, perhaps briefly analysis, and then your conclusions based on the data that you've collected. So you want to keep it as brief as possible. There's a double-blind review that's going to take place. Um, what that simply means is no names are attached. The reviewers have no idea who you are. You don't know who your reviewers are, and they're going to... Um, mark your papers, if you will. They're going to look for information regarding to the same um, topics I just mentioned to see if it's clear enough and if it's, the, if it's um, something that could be developed and it reflects enough of um, islandness, if you will. And then they're going to provide feedback. Papers can be accepted as is, sorry, abstracts. Um, they can be, that means everything that is required is in. It can be provisionally accepted where they might make suggestions on how you might improve it for presentation or it might be um, not accepted if it's considered to be substandard. We're going to have local reviewers as well as international reviewers. So once we go through the process here, it's going to be sent to the ACSA executive and other international um, academics and practitioners in those fields. So for example, if um, someone decides to send in a paper on economics, the reviewer will be a specialist on economics locally and internationally so that they can relate to what's in the paper and they'll provide feedback for you to improve the paper if it's not accepted as is. The deadline for the abstracts um, that we have is September 30th, so that's mm -hmm. the end of next month. Okay. Now, of course, this, the, the, the general purpose is to study are the islands from all of those categories that you, 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 you talk about. What can the Virgin Islander who attend <coughs> hope to get from that conference regarding the Virgin Islands? Well, um, I would say that um, many islands have similarities even though they're in different locations. Mm -hmm. And so um, someone from overseas might present a paper on a given area that you might find um, um, speaks about issues that are pertinent to the Virgin Islands. And so you can uh, have that opportunity to not just uh, view that presentation, but you also have that opportunity to now uh, go up and speak to that individual um, set up, you know, what we call networking, um, because it's, it's, it's not just that particular individual that I'm sure that you would get exposure to. Um, because usually the, the, the persons who attend a given session on a given area have an interest in that particular topic or that particular um, session. And so you can find that you that, uh, that after a paper is presented there's a discussion that evolves and you can get 
uh, feedback from that discussion. You can get involved in the discussion. So I think it's an opportunity for people to um, get exposure and to also grow in terms of their thinking, in terms of what can work, what cannot work. Um, have we tried this? Uh, is this something that we could possibly consider in the future? Is this something that we should be looking at as well? Um, so these are the different uh, areas and the different, uh, I would say, benefits that would come out of it. In addition to learning from others, I think it allows us the opportunity to <clears throat> be able to share with the rest of the world challenges that we may have had, um, as well as some solutions, if we have solutions to some of the challenges that they too might benefit from. So it gives us the opportunity to share with everyone else. Okay. What are some of the challenges uh, that we have in the Virgin Islands that perhaps <coughs> will come up in, 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 in the conference, do you think? Well, I, I can't predict what papers people will mm -hmm. uh, present, um, but I could imagine that with the econo economic climate the way it is, that, that uh, might be an area uh, of interest uh, in terms of what other islands are doing. I, 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 we've already started to receive papers, and I can tell you that um, papers are coming in uh, with that as particular topic in mind. So the economic climate, um, how it is and how it, it has affected other countries and what they have done to try to address um, the situation even outside of the fact that a lot of the factors are external. What are you doing internally to try to cope within uh, um, the climate the way it is? So I could imagine that would be an area um, that would, would be presented. Also, um, because of um, oil prices being so um, unpredictable these days, I would imagine that you might uh, see a couple papers on um, alternative energy or sustainability, sustainable development, um, in terms of what are the alternative ways of creating energy, um, what has been done in this particular uh, area in, in, in um, different islands and so on. For example, um, have islands um, looked into wind farming and have, if they have implemented the wind farming, what was the result? Has it worked? Um, what were the implications? Were there challenges? Because obviously when you change from one system to the next, um, there will be pros and there will be cons, but it's, it's a matter of um, figuring out what is your priority and uh, if the pros outweigh the cons, et cetera. So I, I would imagine that you will see papers in, in, in those two areas. I, I don't know if you have anything to add. I'm hoping education papers will make their way in because um, we're having problems globally, um, not just locally, with uh, literacy rates <coughs> in the schools as far up as the college level. And I've been to conferences where other universities have complained about similar issues with their students as well. Okay. Can we cheat a little bit in some of the, the abstract that you have gotten? <laughs> 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 Can we just like open up a page and say what are some of the ideas, uh, some of the solutions that you have seen, let's just say in economics, because as we know, economics is really uh, the, 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 the piper that's calling the tune. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, or the pair of the piper, I should say. <laughs> honestly, I wouldn't want to divulge what um, an author has mm -hmm. um, submitted to us um, before they have gotten the opportunity to present it. Obviously. <laughs> right. I think that would be um, not fair uh, to them. But I could um, tell you what I, I think um, is, is part, of, part of the issue. Um, uh, it's, it's a matter of, uh, I would say one of the issues would be balancing your budget um, trying to not be overextending yourself. Um, and um, if you look at, for well, the United States, uh, you'll see that they are suffering now because of that. 
Mm -hmm. um, they weren't balancing their budget. They were spending a lot higher than, you know, uh, they were earning revenue. And uh, their, their credit rating has dropped because of that. Um, so those are things that you have to look at. It's, it's not healthy to run year after year, deficit after deficit, after what the deficit add up and, and, and so on. One of the things that I'm not hearing <laughs> from the United States mm -hmm. and from the BVI is earning additional revenue. Now, I mean, I think there, there, there is more than one side to the economic picture. Yes, you shouldn't. You should live within your means. Uh, you shouldn't overspend. You should stay within your budget. But if you have greater needs and you want to increase the quality of life or improve your standard of living, wouldn't it mean then that you would have to uh, increase revenue as well? Because if, if you need more, if your population is growing, you're inviting more uh, workers into the territory, isn't it that you would need to get more revenue to sustain that economic growth and, and, and cutting back or not overspending is not necessarily the only thing, in, in, and that's what I'm hearing. Well, uh, as I said, that was just one perspective that I gave. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, there are various um, perspectives that you could give on that, that given topic. Um, how to uh, raise revenue obviously would be um, a consideration. And um, again, within the, within the context of the Caribbean, the Caribbean islands, um, whatever happens in the United States, if it sneezes, we tend to catch a cold. All right? So um, we have to watch very carefully what they do. And so um, I think it will be very interesting to see papers um, in that given area in terms of uh, suggestions that might be coming out from um, economists as to how um, their particular island um, economy should should be handling handling the sorry the economic crisis are you expecting to see papers for example on economics that would be <coughs> looking or uh, suggesting a shift from uh, dependence on the US for example and to uh, more towards South America or Asia, given the, the, the global, the new global set of circumstances? Again, I wouldn't be able to predict that, <laughs> but... You ain't giving me no information. No, well, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, that's a possibility. Um, mm -hmm. there, there, there are many, many possibilities. Um, some may say that tourism uh, most of the Caribbean islands concentrating on tourism was absolutely um, a mistake in terms of everybody doing the same thing. And farming might be the thing. <laughs> farming might be the thing to do. Right. There might be yeah. some islands um, that have um, what we call um, competitive advantages to doing agriculture, as opposed to, but because of different policies, international policies. Um, I, I would say some islands were steered in that direction by international um, funding agencies. So mm -hmm. the, but the point I'm, I'm, I'm making here, mm -hmm. and I, what I'm trying to draw out, is the wide range of possibilities that can, of information that can come out of the conference. That's why it's so important to attend. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's important because it's, it's talking about what's happening here, what's happening in your neck of the woods, um, are there similarities? Are there differences? Um, is there something that we could be doing? Should we be following a particular exam? Are there case studies out there? Have, are there islands that have done this already and have succeeded? Um, can we learn lessons from them? Can we network with them? Can we get an opportunity to uh, meet some of the uh, persons who would have been involved in coming up with um, their economic strategy. This, this, this is it's, it's, it's an opportunity, as I said, to network and to meet people, to learn from people. The people will also be learning from us, and it gives us international exposure, which I think is pretty much um, important, especially when you are talking about the possibility of persons coming back, what we call repeat repeat visitors. Um, 
and again there's there's another area that we we haven't mentioned um when we have these types of conferences uh sometimes there are international agencies who come along who are interested in setting up projects in particular areas and who knows this could be an opportunity for um, funding to be provided to HLSCC. Alternative or, or, energy project. Right. Yeah. To, to, mm -hmm. to some some uh, company uh, and you know that's the possibility. The possibilities, the possibilities are, are endless. endless. We're going to take a break for a word from our sponsors. We're going to open up the phone and the text line when we come back. It's going to pop up on your screen. If you want to ask about the conference, make a suggestion, comment, uh, ask how you can submit an abstract to make a presentation. Now is an opportunity for you to do so. So keep it locked right here. We're going to take a word from our sponsors, and we're going to come right back with more Spotlight right after this. This program is sponsored by the law firm of J.S. Archibald & Co. and by the trust company J.S. Archibald Trust Services Limited, both of Rotown Tortola BVI. Welcome back to Spotlight. If you've just joined us, I'm Ed Juenka, and I'm here with Professor Ambrose and Dr. Yamraj of HLSCC, and we are talking about the Islands of the World Conference that's going to be held in 2012, 2012, and what's going to, what we are going to be talking about, the benefits to the Virgin Islands, uh, all the various topics, and it's uh, very, very interesting. You know, we need to say the date of the conference. It's May 29th to June 1st, 2012. May 29th to June 1st, 2012. And <coughs> it seems like a long way off, but it actually is not. No, it's not. Okay, May 21st to June. Say it again. First, May 29th. May 29th. To June 1st. To June 1st. Okay, it was a three-day Four, four day four day conference right and the website is going to come up on the screen as well where you can go on the website and you can get all the information about <coughs> uh, the categories that you can choose to present your mm -hmm. your, your papers mm -hmm. and and submit your abstract and all the information about the conference is going to you can go to the website is on the screen right now mm -hmm. right and of course, you can call us. Uh, the phone numbers are on the screen, and the, the the text you can text us as well. And of course, uh, Spotlight is streaming live on JTVLive.net, so you can call and tell your friends overseas that they can tune in and listen to us and and hear about all the interesting things that we're talking about tonight and that we're going to be talking about in the future here on Spotlight. So it's uh, we're going global right now. We talked some about the possibilities of what we could be speaking of at the conference regarding economics. Education is another big issue <coughs> in the Virgin Islands. Uh, we have been measuring our educational success uh, quantitatively. Mm -hmm. uh, many persons have been talking about uh, quality of education, and, and Dr. Yabraj, you spoke of internationally the challenges that uh, educators and education institutions are having regarding uh, literacy, numeracy, and just the whole development of ed education and cognitive thinking on a global level. Right. Doesn't mean that we have to continue in that Definitely process <laughs> because <laughs> everybody, everybody can read doesn't mean that we should allow our children exactly. not to be able to read, right? Mm -hmm. So what, 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 what do you think we can expect uh, coming out of the conference regarding education? Well, we're hoping for some presentations related to issues that either educators would see here, practitioners, be it people from the departments, um, lecturers at the college. But remember, it's not just the BVI. We are going to have um, the whole region represented as well. So we're hoping to get papers across the region. 
that would be um, <clears throat> pertinent to our situation because there's a lot of similarities across the waters in the Caribbean. But um, what we want to get in addition to that with regards to benefit something that we didn't mention as yet would be the possibility of publication in the Journal of Virgin Island Studies. That's a journal that's put out by the college, just published by the college, and we're hoping papers that's relative to the Virgin Islands. So if you have presented on something about the Virgin Islands, we would like very much if you could submit an article <coughs> for consideration and publication because we're hoping to have a special issue that's going to be revolving around this particular conference. So in addition to presentation, um, people have the opportunity of actually having their work published. But remember, this has to be work that's not been published prior or else mm -hmm. it'll be plagiarism. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful of that. And we're inviting, if you'd permit me, articles up to about 2,500 words, including illustrations and photographs, previously unpublished and it must be submitted to the Journal of Virgin Island Studies. You can have shorter articles, up to 1,500 words, including illustrations as well. Or you can even go shorter, for example, if you want to do something on culture and you want to have your poetry that's original published, we have the option for that as well, or recipes. Poetry, you say? Poetry. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a book review, say for example, of a local author and you want to be able to publish it, you can do that as well. Um, letters to editors, anything that might be pertinent to the Virgin Islands that you would want to have published, we would very much welcome you submitting those at the conference or shortly after so that it could be considered for publication. And this is um, mostly historical <coughs> accounts? Oh no, it's going to be uh, multidisciplinary because mm -hmm. the conference is multidisciplinary. This is why it's going to be a, a special issue. So it's going to cover presentations specific to the conference. Okay, so there is no limit to what you can publish as long as it fits within the categories right. that uh, you've mentioned. Let me go over those categories again. You're talking about education, history, literature, culture, sustainable development, alternative energy, climate change, financial services, and economy, uh, Caribbean governance, business and society, information technology, disaster management, health and social development, tourism, philanthropy, conservation, and agriculture. Right. So all those categories, and, and you can find these categories on the website. That's correct. As, as well, so they, they are there, you can, you know, of course the website is on the screen and you can write that down. And also if you, if you forget and you can't get it written down, you can also call HLSCC and, and get the information. The number at HLSCC is 499-4994. And you can ask for your Professor Ambrose or uh, Dr. Yamraj, and you'll be uh, getting all the information you need regarding the co upcoming conference. Now, one of the challenges that we were having with education, uh, at, 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 as I mentioned earlier, is, <coughs> is measurement of quality. Uh, we're hoping to get uh, those types of presentations out of the conference as well. How do we? Uh, keep abreast of the standards, maintaining the standards of education on a certain level. Because sometimes, uh, and, 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 and I've noticed, and, and actually it was, it has been drawn to my attention, that youngsters coming out of high school, for example, coming into the, uh, the tertiary institutions, the teachers wanting to encourage them to succeed inadvertently sometimes lower the standards of the tertiary, of the tertiary institution. You, you, you don't set out to do it, but you find that you're in a classroom with students who are perhaps not making the grade that you think they should be making as a teacher, and you might give them a B when they should have gotten a C. as sort of like a form of encouragement and inadvertently lower the standards. Uh, you, can we expect perhaps to come out of the conference uh, measuring mm. tools to maintain, uh, to help us to maintain standards mm. of education that's preset? That's not happening here, right? That's not happening here. <laughs> that's, not, that's happening here. I, anyways, um, it's, it's going to be an interesting one to be able to 
to deal with. However, I can say I know the college is going through accreditation right now, and mm -hmm. assessment is huge. Mm -hmm. So standards are going to be set up prior, and um, <coughs> assessments will be put in place to ensure that there are some standardizations, uh, particularly across, say, multiple sections of a course. For example, if there's a business course and mm -hmm. five different people would be teaching it, um, some level of standard will be set out to ensure that it doesn't matter who is teaching the course, that at the end of the day, all the students will leave with a particular set of competencies. And that if an A is given in a course, it means that certain competencies pretty much all would be in place. A B would mean you have a few shortcomings and down the line. So I think with accreditation on play, um, in place and in progress, I should say, and um, more standardization with regards to assessment, I don't think that's going to be an issue particular HLSCC? Well, perhaps, <coughs> perhaps not, but I'm asking about uh, those tools coming out of the, the, the 2012 conference, people submitting uh, ideas on measuring tools. Is that something that you would be expecting to come out of the conference? Uh, how would we, how, for example, how would a territory uh, know that how would they know of the quality of their education process? How well, would you be able to determine what that, what that quality is? That would be difficult for me to say that it will come out of the conference simply because I'm not sure what types of abstracts we'll be getting. If mm -hmm. someone listening um, chooses to target that particular topic and present a paper, then definitely we would have a forum to have that discussion, which would definitely be beneficial. If, so however, that's, that's something that uh, uh, that's that's a topic that someone can look at. Exactly. And so that's something that you're throwing out there right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's a possibility. That's a that we are having, right. But no, but I can understand. Mm -hmm. But it's it's difficult for us to say for sure what papers we would get. But clearly, it seems to be a topic of interest. So hopefully, someone looking or listening might decide. You know, mm -hmm. that's something I can look into and try to get a paper in and do a bit of research and be able to share something that might be beneficial for the territory for us to be able to look at and actually take away something from it. Yeah. Agriculture, for example, would be another, uh, <coughs> another topic where the traditional methods of farming versus new technology, for example, in a small island. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are some of the possibilities that, 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 that we might be able to get coming out of the conference, you think? Yeah, I, I, I would imagine um, that those would be possibilities. I know in past conferences, um, there have been um, presentations on um, ways of um, producing food using technology. Of course, those presentations are always controversial mm -hmm. ones. But um, yes, the, the conference in the past has attracted those type of presentations, and I would imagine that, again, we would see that here, especially now that um, the conference is being held in the Caribbean, and we've uh, tried our utmost best to inform our Caribbean neighbors about this conference and to invite them to come over and, and, and to share in their experience. So, um, and I know agriculture is a, an area that, a lot of island economies are now reconsidering mm -hmm. very seriously. So, um, of course, I, I would imagine, yes, we, we, will, we will be seeing papers in, in that category. And the whole, the whole notion <coughs> of, of self-sustainability yeah. from an island perspective, because mm -hmm. th those are some of the things that we're discussing now. How do we sustain ourselves uh, if the international community fails to produce the food mm. that we need. If there's an interruption of the food supply, um, some, something happened on the waters coming to uh, uh, the BVI, a war breakout between uh, America and China, and, <laughs> and well, we can't get food here. Well, know? not just that, but, mm -hmm. but the fact that you, 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 transportation in itself accounts for a, a large percentage of the cost of the food when it gets here. Yes. Um, so anytime you have, um, as I said, instability in, in, in oil prices, uh, it, it will affect transportation and therefore it will have implications for um, importation. Um, and I, I know that the Caribbean is, is, is very concerned about the import bill 
that the Caribbean yes. is actually um, uh, recording on an annual basis. It is huge. Ninety-five percent yeah. of ninety-five percent of, <laughs> of, of, of the, the, the goods and services that we purchase in the BVI <laughs> is imported. Right. Mm -hmm. So that right there is a, a, a area. Uh, perhaps you should talk a little bit about that briefly in the in the context of this conference. That what does it mean economically for us to make hundreds of millions of dollars in the territory uh, from our tourism product, from our financial services product, only to have that money just stay in the BVI briefly, perhaps a day or two, mm -hmm. before having to go out into right back into to 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 the United States or Asia or wherever, the, wherever, it, wherever it comes from. What does that mean economically for us? Um, it means that you have to keep, keep plugging at getting tourists to come and keep um, uh, bringing in revenue in whatever um, capacity that you're bringing in because obviously the money is going back out. So it's not staying here. So it's not staying so you're not here. getting the full benefit right. of the use of that yeah. money. Uh, what, what perhaps needs to be looked at is how can you get it to stay here and circulate even if it's temporary before it For a little while or, longer than a couple of right. days. What activities, mm. what, what type of um, um, business or opportunities should we be trying to encourage to, to get it to stay here? And and that's a challenge. That's a challenge for all island, all island states. So. Because as long as you're surrounded by water, there's a disconnect between you and um, your neighbors or the rest of the world. So you either have to make a decision that you are going to um, import um, what you need, or you're going to try to do it yourself. And certainly, paper <laughs> certainly papers uh, coming out of the conference regarding. Uh, what we can do to keep the money circulating longer in the territory and in islands generally mm -hmm. would be an important paper, uh, an of important information to have. Of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, so let me say, I got a, a text that, uh, what happened in my bag? Oh, there you go. Uh, it says, good night. I would like to thank JTV for the live broadcast on the internet for we have been out of cable for a couple of days and <coughs> still can see live coverage thank you jtv well well thank you for those sentiments uh, the, yeah. the the website is working the mm -hmm. live stream is working and people are able to to not that's the importance of not being able to have what be independent of any one particular thing yeah <laughs> you know i think that we need, we need to learn a lesson from that being independent from any one particular thing we're gonna take a break for a, word, a word from our sponsors, we're going to come back with uh, Dr. Yamraj and Professor Ambrose. We're talking about the upcoming 2012 uh, conference, Island Conference, and it's going to be held on May 20, from May 29th to June 1st, 1st at H. Lavity South Community College. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have uh, people from all over the world representing various islands. Uh, how many islands? I uh, think I'll participate. To say. <laughs> difficult to say. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to. That might be a good study. <laughs> <laughs> how many islands there are. But uh, it's going to be a lot. Yeah. Yes. We're going to take a break for a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back, hopefully, with you on the phones or on the text. The number's going to be on the screen. Keep it locked right here to Spotlight. Mm -hmm. Spotlight is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, the Radio Doctor. Totola Concrete Limited, and Varieties and Electronics. <laughs> 